Hi all, you are watching Simulink tutorial and today we are going to see events in state flow. So let's start. So what is an event? So event is a state flow object that can trigger actions in any of the following objects. That is state flow chart, simulink triggered subsystems, simulink function called subsystems. And for an event to occur, it must be broadcast. It can be done by action in charts. Or the simulink model for example you can define an event to occur when a signal changes its sign so let's have a look at this model so there is this chart which gives three output events that is p1 p2 and p3 so p1 calls function call subsystem p1 underscore sys then p2 calls function call subsystem p2 underscore sys and p3 calls function call subsystem p3 underscore sys so i'll explain the chart but before that let's see what are this function call subsystem so these are function call subsystem blocks and each gives output as one number so first one gives one second one gives output as two third one gives output as three now the subsystems can have any logic that you want to implement under that function so just want to keep this model simple i just have uh, added this constant and provided it as output so one two and three so for larger systems this can have any complex processing logic providing some parameters and those parameters can be used in this second subsystem and again there is some complex logic and parameters from the second one can be used in this third subsystem so that's for complex systems okay and i have designed this model such that at a time only one function call subsystem will be active i have added this merge block and output of this merge block is given to the scope if you want to know the use of merge block in detail please watch the mux versus merge video at the link given in the description below so now that we are clear about outside logic let's have a look at the chart logic so these are two parallel states that is counter and action so what are parallel states so if you want to understand the detail working of parallel states please watch my previous video at the link given in the description below so first counter state will execute and then action but remember that both states are active at the same time so first the init state will be active in the counter state and hence i will be initialized to zero and since action state is also active its default state that is one and hence the p1 event occurs so to transit from init to count there is no condition so it will directly go to count from init and i will be equal to one that is the entry action for count and in its during action i will be incremented and unless and until it becomes equal to 3 it will be incremented and event p1 will keep occurring now once it reaches equal to 3 state 2 becomes active and event p2 occurs and in counter it re-enters in this count and again i will be equal to 1 and incremented up to 3 and once it reaches 3 the state 3 becomes active and event p3 occurs now p1 p2 p3 are events so how to add them so go to model explorer select the chart and to add a new event click on the symbol that looks like lightning bolt give name to that event since i don't want this event in this model i won't rename it and p1 p2 p3 are output events hence their scope is output so event can be 
local input or output okay and i'm deleting this one so if we look at the attributes of p1 the name is p1 scope is output of simulink port is 1 and its trigger type is function call so since we are using function call subsystem block it is function call so if i was using triggered subsystem block it would be either edge so p1 p2 and p3 events and that's how we add events in straight flow chart so i'm closing this one and now simulate the model and for this model the solver is fixed step discrete and step size is 0.5 so let's have a look at the graph so for first three steps it is 1 then 2 then 3 then again 1 2 and 3 so it is working fine so why did i add this init state in this counter state so try the same logic without init state and see what is the difference in the output you get so that's all for this video if you like this video give it a thumbs up and keep watching and keep learning